Lewis Barnum Jr., known to family and friends as Barney, was born July 21, 1940, in Cheshire, Connecticut, to Kurt and Ann Barnum, and grew up with his brother Cliff. Barney demonstrated leadership at a young age. He was a Boy Scout for 11 years and was president of his freshman and senior class at Cheshire High School, where he also played football and baseball. While attending St. Anselm College, he participated in the Marine Corps Platoon Leaders Course program, which led to his commission in the Marine Corps Reserves. After graduating from the Artillery Officers Orientation Course in 1963, he assumed duties at the Marine Division on Okinawa, Japan. Following additional assignments in Spain with the 2nd Marine Aircraft Wing and Naval Base Pearl Harbor, he accepted an appointment to the regular Marine Corps and was assigned as a forward artillery observer with H Company, 2nd Battalion, 9th Marines in Vietnam. On 18 December 1965, during Operation Harvest Moon, Lieutenant Barnum's company was ambushed and pinned down by the North Vietnamese, resulting in their separation from the remainder of the battalion. With complete disregard for his own safety, he gave aid to the mortally wounded rifle company commander, then removed the radio from the dead operator and strapped it to himself. He then assumed command of the rifle company and reorganized it to replace the loss of key personnel. His leadership and courage would give his fellow Marines the strength needed to launch a successful counterattack despite the overwhelming odds against them. While under fire, Barney called for air support to help stabilize the situation. Committed to the priority that no Marine gets left behind, he ordered engineers to clear a landing zone to evacuate the mounting number of dead and wounded. When the pilot told him the area was too hot to land, Lieutenant Barnum stood in the clearing and declared, look down here where I'm standing. If I can stand here, then by God, you can land here. Immediately following his direction, the helicopter landed and successfully evacuated the dead and wounded then led the remaining Marines across 500 yards of fire-swept ground to reunite with the rest of the battalion. For his gallant initiative and heroic conduct, Lieutenant Barnum was awarded the Medal of Honor on February 27, 1967 at the Marine Corps Barracks, Washington, D.C. by former Secretary of the Navy, Paul H. Nitze. In June 1966, he was promoted to captain and later served as aide-de-camp to Lieutenant General Louis W. Walt from March to August of 1967. The general offered Barney his choice of next assignment and without hesitation, he opted for another tour in Vietnam, making him the first Marine to receive the Medal of Honor and return for a second tour, in which he served as commanding officer of Battery E, 2nd Battalion, 12th Marines. From there, he served in a wider range of capacities, including his final assignment as military secretary to the 29th Commandant of the Marine Corps. Barney retired from the Marine Corps in August 1989 at the rank of Colonel after 27 years of exemplary service. In addition to the Medal of Honor, he also received the Legion of Merit, Bronze Star with Combat V and Gold Star, Purple Heart, Defense Superior Service Medal, and Combat Action Ribbon. Transitioning to civilian life, Barney served as the Principal Director of Drug Enforcement Policy within the Office of the Secretary of Defense and later served as the Deputy Assistant Secretary for the Navy for Reserve Affairs and Acting Assistant Secretary for Manpower and Reserve Affairs. He currently serves on over a dozen boards including SEGS for Vets and the Board of Directors of the Marine Corps Law Enforcement Foundation. In honor of Barney's heroism, an Arleigh Burke class destroyer was named after him in 2016. Reflecting on his life, Barney credits his Marine Corps training for giving him the ability to step up to life's many challenges, a message he conveys to others whenever he has the opportunity. Today, Barney and his wife Martha live in Reston, Virginia. They have two children, four grandchildren, and one great-grandchild. A man who demonstrated heroic and selfless dedication in service to his country and who has inspired many over the years. The United States Navy Memorial presents the 2018 Lone Sailor Award to Harvey Barney Barnum.
Wow, it doesn't get any better than that. You know, I stand before you tonight as a humbled, grateful American. Grateful that I was born, got to live, grow up, and be educated in the greatest country in the world, the United States of America. I'm I'm grateful that that I got to wear the cloth of this great country and serve as a United States Marine, as an officer of Marines, both in war and in peace. And I'm grateful that this great country uh, entrusted this medal to me because I am a caretaker of this medal for those great Marines and phenomenal Navy corpsmen that I got to lead on the field of battle as a first lieutenant. And I'm grateful um, to be here tonight and be a recipient of the Lone Sailor Award and to join the ranks of other great Americans who have received this prestigious award in the past. And I extend my personal congratulations, Bill. And I am truly honored to share the stage with you tonight as the 218th Lone Sailor Award recipients. By your presence here tonight, my friends, you not only honor Bill and me, but you are in fact honoring our great Navy Marine Corps Coast Guard team and our great country. When Dr. Jack London, a true American patriot whom I have always admired, called me to tell me that I had been selected to receive the Lone Sailor Award, I had the same unbelievable sensation throughout my body that I experienced when Secretary Ray Mavis called to tell me he was naming an Early Burke class destroyer, the Harvey C. Barnum, Jr. Dr. London, Deborah Clint Wood, Clint Eastwood saying, you made my day with that call. And I'm honored, my respected friend, that you were the presenter tonight. This great Lone Sailor Award statue that you presented me tonight will be placed aboard the Harvey C. Barnum, Jr. upon its commissioning and will ride the high seas along with the crew of DGG 124. And in years to come, <laughs> and in years to come, I look forward to instilling in the officers and crew of the Barnum the leadership traits that were passed on to us by General John A. Lejeune and the qualities of honor, courage, and commitment that all Marines present here tonight have fostered throughout their career. And as we gather here tonight, we are a nation at war. America's at risk in a way that it has never been before. The world is in chaos, very unstable, and as volatile as I've ever seen it in my lifetime. Terrorist enemies still plot against America and the civilized world. Our enemy, ISIS, fights for an ideology based on a rational hatred of who we are, what we stand for. They want to bring us down. We didn't start this fight, my friends, and it will not end until the terrorists understand that we, as a people, will never lose faith or our courage. Our Marines, sailors, soldiers, airmen, and Coast Guardmen have fought for the last 16 years, fought this enemy all around the world, and never for a second wondered why. They know, and they are not afraid. These magnificent combat warriors have realized great success by unceasing pursuit, day after day, 
night after night into whatever lair Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, ISIS would slither and hide. Our gallant warriors have never lost faith in their country or doubted the correctness of their cause. They have faced and continue to face dangers every day that those of us safe and comfortable in America cannot imagine. By our will and courage, this danger will and must be defeated. So I ask you all, stop, pause, and reflect. Reflect on how fortunate you are to be an American and have those magnificent young warriors doing what needs to be done all around the world to ensure our safety, to ensure our way of life endures, to ensure we continue to enjoy our freedoms. Those magnificent combat warriors are playing an away game so that they never have to play a home game again. And Admiral Moran, the individual sailors of the DDG 214 will be the linchpin to success, mission accomplishment. And I commit to you, Vice Chief, that I will personally always encourage them to have the courage to meet the demands of their profession and their mission. Their mission in war will be hazardous. Their mission in peace will be demanding. And whether at peace or at war, I will encourage the crew to always make the right decisions at the right time for the right reasons. Decisions made in the best interest of the United States Navy and this great country without regard to personal consequences. The Navy mission remains the same since 1785. Deter through strength and when required to fight and win. And in closing, as General Gray would say, take care of yourselves and continue to take care of each other. And I challenge each present to remember the Marine Corps motto, Semper Fidelis, always faithful. And I charge each one of you to always be faithful to your God, your country, your family, and the sailors, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen who make our great Navy Marine Corps team. And Martha and I thank you all for joining us on this most memorable evening, an evening we will relive and remember for years to come. Receiving the Lone Sailor Award in the presence of family and friends has made this a truly most special evening. God bless you all. May God continue to bless this great country. And more important, may God continue to bless the sailors, Marine, and Coast Guardmen who serve you and me. Thank you.